What is up everyone? My name is Joe and this is Different Take. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and remember to click the bell so you don't miss out on any new content. How y'all feeling out there? Y'all okay? You hanging in there? Okay. Good times. Good times. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of Hell House LLC. If you've seen it, if you haven't, you can let me know as well. Also, since Hell House is a found footage horror movie, list your favorite found footage horror movie down below. There's some good ones out there, so I'm really curious to see what some of your favorites are. Hell House LLC is a 2015 found footage horror film written and directed by Stephen Cognetti. Story goes like this. Five years after an unexplained malfunction causes the death of 15 tour goers and staff on the opening night of a Halloween haunted house tour, a documentary crew travels back to the scene of the tragedy to find out what really happened. What happened that night at the Abaddon Hotel? I don't know. This movie is scary as shit. I saw this movie a couple years ago and I knew when I first started this channel that this was one of the first movies I wanted to cover because I feel like not enough people talk about this movie. It's got some pretty good jump scares that are spread throughout the movie that get you, but what this movie is really good at is building tension. There's this feeling of dread throughout the entire movie. It really showcases its scares. It's a found footage movie, but the camera angles and the camera movements are so effective. The director was really good at getting whoever controlled the camera to focus it and show you only what the director wants you to see at that particular moment. The scares are very calculated and you could tell the director really had a vision and planned out every single scare. Hey man, how many freaks do we have? Are you sure? The story is good. It's not too over the top. It deals with supernatural elements, but they don't show too much or go into it too much. Some of that is because of budget, yeah, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. That forces directors to get creative and hide things and keep them in the shadows, keep them in the dark and your brain then automatically fills in those gaps and your imagination becomes your worst enemy. So not only is it scary, but it also feels real. Whereas bad CGI and special effects feels artificial because, well, it is. And that takes you out of a movie or they show too much of a monster or the story gets too complicated or convoluted and you're not scared anymore because you're watching the movie like, okay, well, well, this is just goofy. This movie doesn't do that. And because of a more grounded approach, it really feels like you're watching something that really happened. And it freaks you out a little bit. We have no business being here. The footage from the tour goers and the documentary interviews, it all felt realistic. And the background music with the interviews combined with the crime scene photos and the past photos of the Hell House crew, it added weight to the story and made it feel kind of sad. It made it feel like it really happened. And that's good because then you get invested in the story. You want to know what happened. The film pulls like a Tarantino style move. It tells you the ending and what happened at the very beginning. So right off the bat, it tells you what happened at the start of the movie, but without any specific details. And it really contributes to the film's atmosphere. It's like you're watching a crime documentary, like making a murder or something. And all you know is something terrible happened here. We don't know what, but we're going to find out and it makes everything going forward that much creepier. Every single moment the characters are walking around the house, turning the corner, walking up or down the stairs, or if a character is by themselves, you're just on the edge of your seat waiting for something bad to happen because you know that in the end, something bad really did happen. And it's just unsettling. And the movie just makes you wait and wait and wait to the point that every time something moves or you hear something, it just makes you jump. You don't know when something's gonna happen. You're just expecting things to happen. And when nothing happens, it just continues to build that tension more and more and more. And there's no letdown because they do cash in their scares. There's a payoff. There's always a payoff. But until that scare happens, until the payoff comes, you're just, you're continuing to build that tension. The acting was pretty good. Nothing great, but it was good. The script seemed partially improvised, so it felt realistic almost too realistic in that none of the characters really stood out too much, at least I didn't think so, 
except for Paul, played by Gore Abrams, and of course, Sarah, played by Ryan Jennifer Jones. Love, Sarah. Sarah, Sarah what can I say? I love Sarah. But it still worked because there really wasn't any poor acting that took you out of the scene. The cast felt like real people and real friends, so you cared for this group as a whole. And that's so important in a film because then you become invested in the story and the characters. You're already invested in the story because of the story and because of the mystery. And now you become invested in the characters because they're relatable and they're likable. So you care about them. You don't want to see anything bad happen to them, even though you kind of already know something bad happened to them. So it's like kind of sad, but then it's kind of, you know, yeah. This movie is fun too. It feels like you're setting up a haunted house with some friends or going through a haunted house. The house, the props, the decorations, etc. It all resembled a real haunted house. I believe the movie was actually shot in a real haunted house attraction located in my home state of Pennsylvania. Yo Philly, how you doing? And you know every year around September, October, there are haunted houses and haunted hayrides popping up everywhere. So it's nostalgic and really sets the mood and the atmosphere for that time of year. And it really gets you in the Halloween spirit. Watching it by yourself is not gonna lie, it's a little creepy. Watching it with a group of people or a group of friends, it's just fun and still just as scary. It's head doesn't fucking turn, and it turned last night. Explain to me right now how that fucking head turned. Ugh, those fucking clowns. Oh my God. Yeah, no, hell no. Talk about simple and effective. The goddamn clowns. They're goddamn terrifying. Fuck those clowns, that's all I'm gonna say. Right, Mikey? He knows what I'm talking about. Anyway, you know, you see these clown costumes in the movie and they're very basic clown costumes, and you see them at every single run-of-the-mill Halloween store, but they were still so damn creepy. The director effectively utilized the clowns in a very simple way, without spoiling anything. It's a perfect example of less is more. So without big, huge sets, huge amounts of gore, CGI, special effects, or multi-million dollar on top of million dollar budget from a big film studio, this film was still able to make you feel so much tension and so much dread as if at any moment, something scary or unsettling or terrifying was gonna happen. You're on the edge of your seat, waiting and treading the next scare. So you feel extremely vulnerable as a viewer. And it's pretty constant throughout the entire movie. When I was a kid, yeah, I would have to cover my eyes sometimes watching a really scary movie, but movies don't really do that to me as an adult. I ain't gonna lie to you, this one did. You what? Grown ass man sitting there covering his eyes and looking away from the screen because I just, what do you want from me? I'm just being honest with everybody here. I'm just being honest. So shut up, Mikey. Sorry about that. Because you just, you know something was gonna happen. You know it's coming and then it doesn't. And you're just sitting there waiting with all this tension and my brain never shuts up anyway. So when I'm watching a horror movie, I think of every possible horrifying situation. And so it's like torture. And I'm just sitting there and it's just unsettling and it, mm -mm, mm -mm. nope, nope, nope watching this movie by yourself with the lights off. Yeah, no, no. Absolutely not. Now, in saying all that, I still highly recommend this movie. I can't recommend this movie enough to people who like horror movies, found footage horror movies, etc. The original version is currently streaming on Amazon Prime Video and Shudder. There's a special edition director's cut version on uh, DVD, which is this bad boy right here. So, uh, there's a few minor changes, but nothing too major. So if you want to check it out just to see if you like it, stream it first and see if you like it. And if you like it, go pick up the DVD here. I got this on Amazon. Um, Stephen Cognetti sells it on Amazon. So, um, and support him and the whole Hell House crew. And yeah, I definitely will be watching this movie every year around Halloween. I liked it that much, even though it's tough to watch because it creeps me the hell out. I still love it. And I can honestly say it's one of my favorite found footage horror movies. It's up there. I'm not gonna say the other one because that's a video for another day. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Thank you, Selena, take it away.